through the hands of those who dedicate their lives to creating remarkable food, I offer you a mouth-on approach to Quebec's farm-to-table culture. We'll eat our way across the land, meet the artisans behind the produce that celebrate the beauty of our terroir. I think it's the most tourist-friendly destination in the Greater Quebec City area. You cannot come here and not visit L'Ile d'Orléans. I'm telling you, you'll understand why farm to table is our way of life and not just a trend. Hi, I'm Alison Van Rassel. For this episode of A Foodie Guide to Quebec City, I'm taking you a few kilometers away from downtown Quebec City to L'Ile d'Orléans. Welcome to rural wonderland, Ile d'Orléans, a traditional Quebec countryside, cradle of Nouvelle France, of French America. The island is dedicated primarily to agriculture with a diversity of food cultures, including fruits and vegetables of all kinds, honey, maple, wine, poultry, and bread. That's right, Boulangerie Blouin has been around for more than a hundred years with the same hands-on approach as the founding family. Something the owner Jérôme Lajeunesse knows a thing or two about. Let's find out how bread-making traditions are kept alive in his business. Jérôme, thank you for taking some time to meet with me today. Uh, we'll have this conversation in French with Jérôme. He's the owner of La Boulangerie Blouin because I truly want you to find the essence of the work that's done here. Uh, Jérôme, où sommes-nous physiquement en ce moment? Au cœur même de la boulangerie. Euh, c'est ici que toute la production de pain se fait. La cuisson tant du pain que de la pâtisserie. Ici, ce cœur, comme tu l'appelles, de la boulangerie, il a 100 ans. Oui, ça a toujours été ici au cœur même de la, du village de Sainte-Famille. Mm -hmm. À l'époque, la première génération des Blouins était l'épicier du moment aussi dans le village. Donc, il était à la fois l'épicier, le boulanger, l'agriculteur. Et de génération en génération, ils sont venus qu'à séparer euh, complètement, je dirais, de l'épicier de, de la boulangerie pour que la deuxième génération prenne le relais. Et depuis six ans, c'est moi. Oui. Nous, en tant que résidents de la région, oui. on a vu les produits de la boulangerie Blouin, non seulement sur l'île, mais là, on les voit un peu partout oui. s'en venir dans la région. Oui. C'est important pour toi d'ouvrir oui, ça. Oui, absolument, d'amener un second souffle, je dirais, à la boulangerie, mais par un plus grand rayonnement, je dirais. Oui. Essayer d'amener une forme de vitrine, je dirais, oui. à, à notre milieu, à notre village. À notre... Jérôme, c'est un environnement très bruyant. Si tu me permets, on va laisser le pétri, le four, les artisans travailler. On va se diriger dans l'autre section de la boulangerie. Absolument. OK, je te suis. Jérôme, on est ici dans la deuxième portion de la boulangerie Blouin. Euh, ça sent le fruit en ce moment. Ça sent vraiment bon. Qu'est-ce qui se passe ici? Ici, c'est ici qu'on effectue le, le laminage des pâtes. Donc, tout ce qui est pâte feuilletée, pâte à tarte. En ce moment, là, on est en train de laminer tout ce qui est pâte pour faire les fameux trottoirs, les fameux slices de la ouais, région. C'est quoi, quoi un, un trottoir? C'est tout simplement de la pâte feuilletée avec une garniture aux fruits. Donc, mm -hmm. euh, présentement, c'est aux fraises. C'est un peu un classique ici depuis de, de 50-60 ans. Là. Au vrai, donc, c'est important pour la boulangerie de garder ces classiques vivants aussi? Oui, absolument. Pour moi, c'est important de conserver ça, de les amener à bien vieillir dans le temps aussi. Ça devient l'âme un peu de la boulangerie. C'est avec ce type de produit-là qu'on a pu se faire connaître. Ce sont des recettes qui proviennent d'où? Je dirais de génération en génération, tout simplement, qui ont été bien transmises. Euh, au niveau de la pâtisserie, tout ce qui est pâte feuilletée, donc tout ce qui est chaussons feuilletés, on fait des roulés feuilletés, nos fameux trottoirs aux fraises, aux framboises, aux caramels. Pour ce qui est du pain, on a une gamme de pains plus classique, je dirais les pains de ménage, les pains fesses, les pains d'antan qui ont su bien évolué. Puis aujourd'hui, il faut évoluer, je pense, donc c'est des nouveaux exemple? produits, euh, des pains ciabatta, des, euh, des baguettes au levain, euh, des pains croûtés. C'est sûr qu'aujourd'hui, il faut faire attention aux contrastes, au cholestérol. Euh, c'est sûr que ça modifie un peu le, le produit, mm -hmm. 
Mais par la force des choses, on, on réussit tant bien que mal à, à bien le faire évoluer. Oui, et comme on a la chance d'en témoigner en ce moment, c'est aussi une entreprise où l'artisan est encore au cœur du oui, travail. Oui, absolument. Donc, euh, je dirais 90 des tâches sont faites encore de façon manuelle. C'est sûr qu'on fait l'utilisation aujourd'hui, exemple, de, 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 de laminoir. Ah non, là, mais pour ça, c'est essentiel. Pâte. On ne veut pas laminer de la non. pâte à la main. On, on l'a fait pendant ça. un temps, mais je ouais. pense qu'on a passé à autre chose aujourd'hui. Donc, je pense une belle équipe d'artisans qui sont passionnés, qui, qui aiment ce qu'ils font. Puis je pense que ça transparaît même dans le produit ou du moins dans la qualité du produit. Absolument. Jérôme, qui est la clientèle de la boulangerie Blouin? Je dirais on a une belle clientèle locale. Je pense de tous les âges. Je pense que tout le monde s'y retrouve. Il y a des clients aussi qui viennent de l'extérieur, qui se déplacent à l'occasion quand ils sont de passage dans la région, qui viennent faire leur petit arrêt ici. Ouais. Je pense que c'est un petit retour aux sources. Ouais, il y a des types de boulangerie ici, comme il y en existe très peu maintenant ou aujourd'hui dans la province. Mm -hmm. Donc, je pense qu'on sait bien rejoindre un peu une clientèle assez, assez élargie. L'île d'Orléans, je dirais, c'est un milieu de quiétude, c'est certain. Tout le monde s'y retrouve. Les gens aiment bien, je pense, venir sur le territoire de l'île, tout simplement pour une forme de ressourcement, de retour mmh. d'antan. Donc, quand ils rentrent dans une boulangerie comme ici, puis qu'ils voient que c'est comme une boulangerie, comme dans les années 70-80, mmh. comme chacun des petits villages avait, je pense que c'est très ressourçant, puis les gens trouvent un certain plaisir, je dirais. Je suis d'accord avec toi. Qu'est-ce qu'on te souhaite pour l'avenir? Mais je pense que c'est une belle continuité, tout simplement. Que ça continue, que ça perdure dans le temps. Mmh. C'est l'essentiel, oui. Mais moi, je te souhaite de garder chaque être humain qui a un poste, qui a une tâche à faire, parce que je pense que c'est ça l'essence de la boulangerie oui, Blouin. Ce sont oui. aussi les êtres humains oui. qui mettent de leur temps et du gros de coude. Oui, ça fait la différence. <rire> ça fait la différence. Oui, ça se doute. Je suis oui. d'accord avec toi. Merci, oui. Jérôme. Merci. À vous. Merci. <rire> Baptized the Jardin de Québec, Ile d'Orléans' incredible fertile soil has a rich history of abundant food resources. Some are sold at the local markets, others wholesale. Others go straight to the kitchens of some of Quebec City's best restaurants. North America's biggest producer of organic black currant is located right here in the village of Saint-Jean de l'Île d'Orléans. Ferme et vinaigrerie du Capitaine transform this fruit into wine, then into vinegar. It's a unique process distinguished by its European charm and unique Québécois touch. Let's meet with owner Vincent Noël inside the vinegar cellar. Vincent, thank you for having me. I really appreciate seeing you again. Thank you. Where are we physically here? Here we are in the cellar of the farm. And there's a very distinctive smell. It smells like vinegar here. It's a fruit wine vinegar, pure vinegar of each fruit. I'm a big grower of organic blackcurrant. In North America, the production of blackcurrant are very small mm -hmm. if you compare with the Europe. But here we are the bigger in the North America. I started uh, 25 years ago. After a year and a year, we decided to produce uh, jam, jelly, syrup, and many uh, products with uh, blackcurrant. And since this time, we have chosen to produce a vinegar, and uh, we have to produce our wine for make the vinegar, because the wine are the base of each vinegar. Okay, so you start from the fruit that's growing just behind us, You make wine yes. and you transform it into vinegar. Yes, we make a specific wine, not for drink, very rich in flavor and fruit mm -hmm. and low in sugar. We have a small farm for grow the bacteria of vinegar and we inoculate the wine of each fruit with this bacteria and this bacteria consume the alcohol mm -hmm. and create the um, acetic acid, the vinegar. And each percent of alcohol become 1% of vinegar. And then you put the liquid in the barrels. Yes. The vinegar stay uh, one year to 10 years. Depend the type of vinegar. But uh, in reality, we have the old fashioned method is to produce the vinegar in wooden barrel and don't accelerate the processing of acidification. 
Okay, so you let thyme do its job. Yes, it's the big difference with the industrial vinegar about the taste and the final product. Mm -hmm. It's a little corrosive though, right? <laughs> it's a very highly corrosive. It's highly corrosive. I'm saying that not for us as the humans, but for the building around, it's incredibly corrosive. Yes. All concrete, all metal, are uh, eat by the acetic acid in the air. We have to use a very good barrel yeah. because the vinegar eat the woods. Why is it important for you to be a purist in the vinegar tradition? Many people mix and want to produce a vinegar for low price, but it's not interesting for the health and it's not interesting for the gastronomy and the cooking at the home. Yeah. And the people, they come to visit us from uh, many places and very far away sometimes, or the neighbor don't want uh, industrial vinegar. They want a good vinegar, but made with the real things and they taste uh, interesting. We're beside the Fleuve Saint-Laurent, the majestic St. Lawrence River. How does the terroir of where you grow your black currant yes. transfer into your fruit? Mm. In the south side of the island, we have the wind east side to west side. Mm -hmm. And we have the flavor of the river mm -hmm. and the cold of the river and the type of soil are very different here. We are sure we have a difference. I have tasted a lot of black currant mm -hmm. in the world and uh, the same variety here are completely different, the same variety in England. Oh really? You can taste the difference? Oh yes, a big difference. The sourness, the content of sugar and the consistent flavor. The blackcurrant from Europe are more interesting for eat directly, but our blackcurrant are practically too strong. <laughs> wow, perfect for vinegar. Perfect for vinegar. <laughs> and I'm thinking there's a lot of education. There's a lot of tasting. People need to taste to yes. understand. All the people, they come here, the, the group in, in bus, or the people, they come with the family. We offer the free tasting of each product yeah. for the people know what is the product. You've been doing this for 25 years now. Have you seen an evolution in the palate of your customers? Yes, yeah. it's a very, very big difference. And the people arrive with more knowledge, are more open also. And we have a chance to explain very well with the tasting. They see the cellar, they see the field, they understand. Same with the chef. Each chef, they come here and taste and receive the explanation about how we produce, it's a new customer. Oh, I, I have no doubt. And there are a lot of chefs in the greater Quebec City area yes, we have that very good use chef. your products. Absolutely. Yes. The chef is the best uh, person for us. When the chef tells, I'm interested, I'm ready to buy this vinegar yeah. and put in my menu, mm -hmm. I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> I know the vinegar is ready for them. <laughs> if it's good for the chef, it's good for the people. <laughs> What do we wish you for the future? The principal wish is the possibility to live with the, this production of uh, vinegar and fruit. And also, if one day uh, our daughter won't take our place, yeah. she's have a chance to live uh, normally with this kind of a small business. I hope your wish comes true. I honestly do. Thank you very much, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> In 1535, during explorer Jacques Cartier's second voyage to Nouvelle-France, he names this island Ile de Bacchus because of the wild vines he found. But a few months later, he changed it to Ile d'Orléans in honor of Henry II, Duke of Orleans. There are about 7,000 residents on the island, spread over six villages where each has something special to offer. In the summer, that number doubles as seasonal workers flock to the island to lend a hand in the fields. One of the island's most renowned residents was the late singer-songwriter Félix Leclerc, an advocate for Québécois cultural expression. Visiting the island in the fall lets you witness Mother Nature's generosity and taste the landscape from small-scale farms to distilleries. At the entrance of the island, in the village of Saint-Pierre, where the Mona family produce black currant liquors, sister Catherine and Anne Mona are at the head of the family business. Their products are recognized worldwide. Today, I'm meeting with Catherine. 
Catherine, thank you so much for having me in your at your place, I should say. Mm-hmm. Kind of is your second home here, Cassis Monaifi. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's always a pleasure. You not only work yeah. on the island, farm the island, but you also live on the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have this kind of notion that it's a very tourist-friendly area. Yeah. But what is it like to live here? I grew up here, so um, to live here, it's really at the rhythm of the season. Nature, uh, yeah. it's uh, amazing here. There's a very strong relationship with the island and the chefs, for example, yeah. who are in the city. And the relationship started here with a very farm-to-table philosophy. Yeah, I don't know the word, the grenier. The, the nickname, nickname of the yes. island was le grenier de Québec. So from the beginning of the, the colony, the, the settler uh, saw all the possibility and the quality of the soil for the fruit, the vegetables. So it's uh, well known for the strawberry, the apple, but all vegetables, mm-hmm. uh, the potatoes, and now black currants. Yes, black currants. <laughs> With your father planted the first seeds of black currant here. Yeah. And your father is from Europe. Yeah. There is a, a true relationship between Europe Quebec, Nouvelle-France, yes. and black current. Yeah. When he moved to the island, he thought about black current because it's very well known in France for the black current liqueur, all the syrup, uh, the jam, and everything. And in French, it's cassis. Yes. And the people say, oh, that's from France, uh, it's uh, exotic. But in fact, the first settler brought some uh, branches and bushes from the beginning of the colony because uh, it was like a, a medication. My father brought the black current in a new era here in North America, in fact, because, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it was the, the first uh, farmer who grow uh, black current in a largest scale. And now we send some sample and bottles in Europe and we won uh, multiple, multiple awards. Uh, Absolutely. Awards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it medals. was interesting because you and I, we had the opportunity to travel to Bordeaux together yeah. for a big food festival. And I noticed how when people were tasting the black currant, they were destabilized, yeah. but I saw their eyes lit up. Yeah. I saw that they tasted yeah. the quality. Yeah, the varieties we use, the, the soil and the um, climate here is particular, but all the way we transform it a very uh, artisanal way. So the people from France, uh, for example, really have the, the same feeling than the old time, the good time of the crème de cassis. For their generations, their yes, grandparents Yes, from even. the family recipe and yeah. yeah. And you developed a line, a line of many different products here. La Crème de Cassis is the one that shines worldwide. You're recognized for the quality. But can you maybe give us an idea of some of the products that you've developed here? Yeah, Crème de Cassis, uh, uh, wine, aperitif wine, but also blackcurrant jam for sure, blackcurrant jelly, onion jam, but with a little bit of blackcurrant inside, so... uh, uh, olives uh, marinated really? into uh, wines, blackcurrant wine, of course. Blackcurrant is very uh, versatile because so complex. We can create a new world of uh, flavor. Yeah, I think you need to taste it in order to understand how absolutely amazing blackcurrant is. You and your sister are so implicated in every step of the process, from the design, from the bottling, from the harvesting, from working the land. You are involved in every step of the way. For the last 16 years. And I I think that people can feel it with uh, what we do here. Mm -hmm. Like we we really control the quality. (laughs) It's a challenge as well, every step of the way, because you're working with mother nature. Yeah, yeah, and especially the last years and this the last summer, because they're so warm and we all, and maybe not uh, enough, uh, talk about uh, climate changing and everything, and we see it, we can feel it. Tourism is booming on the island, yeah. but not everyone is as open as Cassis Monaifi. Yeah. You have a very children-friendly area, you have the boutique, you have the place where you uh, put the the alcohol in bottles, 
And yeah, you want experience. people to see, it's an experience. That's what I was yeah, looking for. Yeah. And you want people to witness that. Yeah, here from the beginning of the project of my father uh, 26 years ago, it was to sell directly to the people. And the fact Black Current, it's not so well known here. It was important from the beginning to explain the tasting. Yeah. So always the experience here on the site, the quality of the welcoming for the people, it was the hurt yeah. of yeah of uh, Cassis Monaifi. We can go to big uh, grocery stores, but to come on a place special like that with kids and just yeah. taking time yeah. to, to try uh, new flavors, new things, take a little glass of sangria, yeah. and the kids are playing and run around. It just, it's a special yeah. thing in our uh, busy life. And you take the time to produce beautiful products, and I think it's the way that we should appreciate your products, yeah. along with time. What yeah. do I wish you for the future, Catherine? You can uh, wish us to continue in this way. Yeah. We try to, to make uh, the business uh, strong enough to live with me and Anne just going around and continue to create worlds around. So maybe we have some other projects, but the heart, our heart uh, is here. here. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Merci, Catherine. Merci. Thank you so Merci much. You got to come here. You got to come here. <laughs> You can drive, bike, or walk along the island, where you'll notice stone houses dating back to the French regime that have really been well preserved. Along the way, you'll discover a bounty full of local businesses, vegetable and fruit producers, and coffee shops like La Maison Smith. This is the best cup of joe you'll find on the island. Take your time while exploring Ile d'Orléans, because everywhere you look, you'll discover something new. In saint pétronie for example, it might be the smallest village on the island, but not the least interesting. You'll find here some of the province's best wines, where the soil, the terroir, plays a major role in the development of its flavors. Julien, thank you so much for having me today. Thank you, Alison, for being here. I really here. appreciate it. Um, I appreciate the products, <laughs> which is the main reason why I'm here. But other than that, I want to understand when does the history of winemaking begin on Lille d'Orléans? First trace dates back to 1535. That's when Jacques Cartier was sailing on the St. Lawrence River here. And he saw a lot of vines on this island. And he was so impressed by that at the time that he decided to call the island Bacchus Island, Lille de Bacchus, in reference of the god of wine. We have perfect conditions for growing vines on this island. It's been like this forever, so we're just continuing that tradition today. Mm -hmm. And Tawal plays a huge role in winemaking. If the winemaker was with us today, he would be eating it in front of you because he's <laughs> so proud of it. Uh, we have a lot of shale, that dark rock that accumulates a lot of heat and redistributes that heat to the vines, which is mm -hmm. a very important factor for us in a cold climate. And when we talk about minerality in the wine, then it's a big debate, but we think the shale plays a very important role for our wines mm -hmm. too here. In reality, our growing season is actually on the island now longer than the Alsace region, for example, really? in northern France. Yeah, from the no last idea. frost to the first frost, we have even a bigger growing season. It's just the winter that's different. So yeah. for the winter, we have to do specific techniques, but you know, Quebecers, we have a lot of innovations, so we're able to develop a lot of techniques. Mm -hmm. One of those techniques is to train the vines really low to the ground and to make sure that in the winter, the snow will fully cover the vines to protect them, yeah. to act as a natural insulation it's against like a the cold. Yeah. Exactly, so here the snow is our biggest ally and we have snow up to here on the island, so no problem for protecting the vines. But other than that, during the growing season, it's no different than working in any other wine region in the world. Mm -hmm. How do customers react to the fact that we are now recognizing more and more the wines being made in Quebec. How do people react? Do they believe it? <laughs> At first, to be honest, no, they're always very surprised. But when they understand, when we explain it, then it changes everything. Julien, I know that there is something truly special about the wines being made here, that you would come and work in this place. How would you describe the products that are being uh, made here on the Vignoble saint Pedroni? Just two words, passion and authenticity. And that passion, that authenticity comes from the family behind this winery here, the Deneau family, 
They're extraordinary people. They do everything themselves from the vine to the final product in the bottle. And they still do everything by hand. Yeah. So what's in the bottle really reflects their own personality. When I have a glass of the Voile de la Mariée, I can feel the personality of Nathalie. And when I have a glass of the Reserve Boudelille, I can feel a Louis behind that bottle because they express their true personality behind each bottle. And they're really authentic wines. Should we taste? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm all for it. Ah, what do we have here? Le, Le Voile de la Mariée, Marie. the Bride's Veil. Also the name of one of the waterfalls across the bridge. So tell me a little bit about what uh, you're uh, offering so, me to taste. Yes, right absolutely. I chose this wine because it's the one that reflects the most our terroir. This is from a local variety, Vandal Clich, and we were the first vineyard to plant it 30 years ago here, and now it grows almost all over the province of Quebec. Okay. You see it's a very light greenish reflection color. Yep. That's usually a reflection of a cool climate uh, region. Then you can swirl it, smell it, and then you can feel that freshness ah. on the nose. You know, yeah. this citrusy flavors. Absolutely, uh, a little bit of pear, even apple. Pear, green apple, grapefruit, oh, wow. citrus. Yeah. Lots of fruits, right? Oh my God. This is summer on Lille d'Orléans. It is exactly summer in a glass. Light and fresh, very dry in a finish. That's the signature of our right winemaker. There. He doesn't want the alcohol, the sugar, or the oak. He always wants the fruit to stay the star of the wine. So this it is, is a good example complex, of it. Complex, yes. refreshing, very delicate at the same time. I have to admit, this is one of my very favorite wines from all of the province of Quebec. You can tell that there's so much knowledge that we've gained in the last 30 years. Exactly, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. And 30 years means the, the vines give more complex wines, also means the winemakers got more experience, and also the equipment. There's a lot of evolution behind the yeah. equipment. So all of that change in the last 15 years, mostly we saw a very big increase in quality throughout all the wines in, uh, in Quebec, actually. So it's very like motivating what's happening yeah, right now in Quebec. Absolutely. And we're going to have our very own first appellation for Quebec wine next year. So we're really excited about it too. Quebecois are very proud and they're they're beginning to turn towards the Quebec wines even more and more. Julien, I think something that stands out and truly represents the pride that chefs have towards what is being made here at Vignoble Saint Petronie is the fact that you can find these wines in pretty much all of the very good restaurants here in the Greater Quebec City area. Absolutely. And you know, for a very long time, the chefs, they chose to have local ingredients to make their dishes. And uh, for wine, it took a much longer time. But Why? It's, there was this idea that uh, Quebec wines were a very young wine industry, less quality. But thanks to the chef, with their local approach to food, they convinced a lot of sommeliers to embark in this journey to the local side of food and wine together. And yes, now we can find our wines in some of the nicest restaurants uh, in Quebec City. Actually, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mother nature can be tough sometimes, yeah. but it's part of the job. But if we keep that passion and that authenticity, I think we can go very far and uh, maybe another 30 years yeah. at least. I can you wish that for us. Let's <laughs> wish another 30 All right. years. Thank All right. you, Alison. Cheers, Julien. Cheers. Merci. <laughs> tradition. That's what you need to keep in mind about L'Ile d'Orléans and its many different flavors. Well, that's a wrap for the very first edition of Rural Style Foodie Guide to Quebec City. I'm Alison Van Rassel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, through the website foodiequebec.com. Salut les gourmands!